In this video, we're going to look at split screen effects. Now, they're a bit old fashioned, but they're some of my favorite effects, and you can still see them done in music videos today. And those of you who are as old as me, you might even remember them from the 1980s and the 1990s. Really popular in starting credits to TV shows and films. Now, doing a split screen is actually quite easy because all you're doing is overlaying three clips on top of an original clip. So here we've got our slow motion wave, which kind of just goes on and on here. And then what we've done is we've right clicked and added a new video track three times. So we've got V123 as our brand new video tracks and V4, which was our original video track. And then what we do is we just place our videos, the bottom one being slightly longer than the next one, and that one slightly longer than the one on top. So the effect you get as it plays is that you get one clip on top of another clip on top. So the effect we get is basically one video clip will turn up on top and next to it will be another one. And then lastly, the final third will be kind of taken care of there. So how do we do this? Let's go through it really quickly. My original clip is just this slow motion wave. So let's bring that back over here. So if I was to play, it's just going to play like that. Now for my three overlay clips, I've already marked the ins and outs. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about with ins and outs and adding video tracks and things like that, it's really important that you go back and watch basics one and basics two of my light work series, because it'll kind of get you up to speed with what I'm doing. So my three clips, which are my leaves, my cherry blossoms and my clouds, I've already marked the ins and outs. I'm going to pick up the leaves and I'm just going to place it somewhere on the timeline there. I'm going to pick up the cherry blossoms and I'm going to put them there. And then the clouds, I'm going to put them there. You can see that I've marked the ins and outs quite well. I already see that there's a bit of a mistake with the cherry blossoms. It's a little bit shorter than it should be. So what I'm going to do first of all is just disable all tracks like that. I'm going to move it to roughly where it should be. It should be there or so. I'm just going to make it a slightly longer just by pulling the end of that. And let's bring back our video tracks like this. So what we've got is the same effect as before, but with one big difference. You can see now that my clips, rather than being one third of the screen like they were here, they're actually taking up the whole screen. That's because I haven't actually done anything to them yet. So let's move directly to the VFX. You can see our clips are already there. They kind of lined up exactly the way they should be. Let's add our DVEs. What we're going to do is we're just going to add a DVE to each one, which is a 2D DVE. We're going to put that on the leaves dancing one. And what we're going to do is we're going to cut the right hand side. We need to cut 66% off the right hand side. So let's go to the crop. Let's go to the right. And you can see I'm already cutting it way easier if I just type in 66.66 like so. And that's basically cut off the right hand side over there. I'm going to now move the playhead forward to the cherry white blossoms. That's of course taking the whole screen. I'm going to add a 2D DVE to that. And what I'm going to do is cut off 33% from this side and 33% from this side. In other words, I'm cutting both the left and the right off. So I'm going to go 33.33 on the left hand side and 33.33 on the right hand side. They've, therefore, I've only got the middle third left. And lastly, let's put a DVE on the clouds. And I'm going to crop that on the left. I'm going to crop it 66.66%. And what you've got is a perfect one third, one third, one third kind of situation going on here. So really quickly, we've created the same effect that we had before, which is basically the pictures kind of come in and take up their space on the screen. Now, it might be worth noting, those of you who have not done multiple video tracks, when you put DVEs on multiple video tracks, they turn up here as tabs, just so that you don't get confused with what you're looking at. If the playhead is only on the original channel, all the VFX disappear. As soon as you move it onto anything with a VFX, it appears here. When we move it to the next one, you will see that we have V2 and V3, and obviously they correspond to V2 and V3 over here. So if you're looking for your VFX and you can't see them here, that means your playhead is somewhere else and the VFX isn't actually there yet. 
That's I know that confuses a lot of people. So if we now go back to our edit, we've actually just recreated the effect that we had at the start, which is a really cool effect. So let's just bring that back. So we, all we've done is recreate this starting again over here. So I would like to take this to the next level and animate the entrances of those leaves, the cherry blossoms and the clouds, which is going to make the effect so much better. So let's get on with that one. So what we're going to do, let's go back to our VFX. Let's make sure that we're on the correct one. Yep, we're on the correct one. And what I need to do now is not only is the crop going to be there, I'm also going to animate the position. Now we've covered animation before in one of our videos, but we're going to go into a lot more detail right now. So what we're going to do is the following. Using our arrow keys, we're just going to move the playhead until we get to the first frame, which is that one there. We're going to get to the first frame and we are going to move our leaves just out of the screen, just so that they're disappeared there. So it's 1.51, I'm going to remember that. And what I'm going to do is click on the clock, which starts the keyframes. Now, some of you will have noticed that as soon as I click the clock, I got a little diamond appearing in the keyframes panel over here. This is going to be very important. And with my arrow keys, I'm just going to move it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight frames forward. And what I'm going to do is add a new keyframe here and position my clip all the way down to 0 0.5, which means it's in its original position. So one really annoying thing that you're going to notice now, I'll just disable those two, is that when it comes in, it immediately bounces and tries to go back from where it started. It's one of those really frustrating things about Lightworks. An easy way to fix this is simply to forward your clip all the way to the end, like so, and move your clip back to where it was. And you'll notice that it now stays exactly where it should be. It's, as I said, it's one of those really annoying things about Lightworks, which you really can't do anything about. I'll take a slightly different approach with video two, as you can now see that this animation is going to come in like so. And we're gonna put a similar animation for clip number two, which is the cherry blossoms. So we're gonna do exactly as we did before, which is we're going to position them off the screen like so, we're going to go to the first frame of that animation there. Remember to double check which video track you're looking at. In this case, I'm on V2, so I must be there. Let's take it to the first frame. I'm going to click on the keyframe or the clock symbol there to get a keyframe. I'm going to say one, two, three, four five, six, seven, and eight. Again, eight frames. You might be able to see my laptop's lagging a bit here. This is actually quite hard for most computers to do. I'm going to click on the keyframe again, like so. I'm going to position my clip at 0 0.5 precisely so that it's exactly where I want it to be. And this time around, I'm going to show you a slightly different way of doing it, which is going to the graphs. So if we go to the graphs, you can see that for my V2 clip, it starts all the way up at 1.5, drops down to 0 0.5, which is where we are right now. And then for the rest of the clip, it actually tries to go back to where it came from, which is 1.5. Now that's not what we want. So what we can do is just manually pick up and drag that down to 0 0.5, somewhere around there. Let's see, let's just move that clip forward and see, did we manage to get it? So let's have a look. Yep, that's pretty good. And let's do the last one, which is again, we're gonna go to the V1, like so. So let's make sure we're on V1 and the V1 DVE. We're gonna go to the first frame again, like so. V1. We're going to move our clip off the screen, just there. We're going to click the clock, making sure that first keyframe starts. Let's forward it by eight frames. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Just let my computer catch up with itself. 
that's good. We're going to add another keyframe. We're going to bring it back down to 0 0.5 like so. Go to my graphs and just drag that down there until it's level like so. If we have a look at this animation now, let's see how it looks. I think you'll agree that looks pretty good and you can kind of add a really nice touch to a video you're making. So I'm just going to show you a comparison of the two. So if we go back to our edit, you can see if I zoom out, you can see that we've got two approaches here to a split screen kind of effect. The first one, make the screen bigger. The first one you'll see has a really nice touch. It kind of is just a panels a pair. And that's a pretty nice effect. Second one, we've kind of added that touch with the animation, which is also really nice. Now, of course, you can have them animating back out. That's a whole different thing. And if you wanted to animate it back out, I would recommend that you do it using the graph and not the keyframes themselves. So if we were to just animate them out, so if they were coming in like so, I would animate V3 first. So what I would do is add a keyframe here, like so. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And notice I'm counting. It kind of keeps your animations the same length, which means it looks a little bit more professional when you do it. And I'm going to add another keyframe there. This time around, I'm going to go directly to the graphs because you can see what I, I need to do now. I need to I need to take this and pull it up to 1.5 and also that one as well to 1.5. So what that should do now, if I disable V2 and V1, you'll see that the animation brings it in and then at a certain moment brings it out. And it's a really, really cool effect if you get it right. So if I was to do that quickly for all the other ones, I would come in like this. That would go and somewhere around here in V2, I would do the same thing. Stick in a keyframe. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Wait for my laptop to catch up with itself. Add a keyframe in. Go to my graphs and again deal with this with the graphs and not by moving stuff around because it's so much easier. So I'm just going to move that there. Let's just do a quick test on our first two panels. That's quite nice. And let's do the last one just to make sure that it looks kind of cool. So let's see where the panels are going up. Notice I'm doing this all by eye. Might be nicer. If you did it by timing or by frames, it would look a little bit more professional. So let's have a look. That one goes up there. So let's have that one going up in V1. Let's add a keyframe. Let's go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Like so. We'll add our keyframe. And again, we'll just jump straight into the graph and do it by hand, like so, and move the last animation out as well. So if we go back to our edit, we have an animation that really looks quite cool. You can see my timing's off there, but I think you get the right idea. So it's a really cool way of bringing kind of something cool and new to a picture in picture so rather than doing a standard picture in picture, you can do a split screen. But even if you want to do picture in picture, I hope that you can see that using a few keyframes and animating some stuff can really add a bit of zip and a bit of pizzazz to your videos.